All right, what's happening, peeps? Um, this is um, my attempt to be vulnerable, be open, um, creating this channel. And the, the whole purpose of this channel, um, I guess if we ask questions with the what, the when, the where, the how, and all that stuff. Um, so why this channel? Um, I want to start creating videos. Um, it's crazy because I guess the camera to my iPad is more towards the left and not in the front. So I'm kind of looking at the camera here, but it's actually on the side, which is weird. So I guess I should be looking to the left. <laughs> Um, the um, the purpose of this video or um, this uh, channel, the why, is because some of you guys are aware. Um, I do. I've been doing a lot of Facebook Live and videos on my detailing. You know, I love doing detailing, doing cars and um, paint correction and all that stuff. And so I've been kind of flooding Facebook with videos of that kind of stuff, and that's fine and all that. But for as passionate as I can be about um, paint correction and detailing vehicles and all that. Um, you guys that know me know that, like, I'm a, I'm passionate about Christ. I, I love the Lord, and um, uh, you know, I'm a Christian, and that's that's my main passion. And and I've been neglecting, to one degree, um, the things of God. I you know I go to church and read and all that stuff, but it's kind of, I feel like I've been devoting so much time to the detailing that I actually like have been neglecting the things of God so this is my attempt to create a channel to be outspoken about the things of God and, and um, what I believe to be um, you know the way of salvation according to the Bible and stuff and so my attempt with this channel is to go um, and do extremely short videos I don't, this one might be a little longer because it's the introductory video but that the the whole goal is is basically to do short videos be anywhere between five to eight minutes, um, give or take, and um, to keep them kind of short and crisp. And what I'm going to be going through is the uh, Louis Burkoff. It might be flipped on the screen. I'm not sure, but it's the Louis Burkoff uh, systematic uh, theology. It's just a summary of Christian doctrine, and it goes um, into various subjects starting from like you know the bible and and god's character uh, all the way up to the last things you know which we call uh, eschatology um but the attempt is to basically go over this book it's not a super heavy book and um and um, i'm creating this channel for for to give you guys um nuggets uh, little small ones to to um to get into what we believe as christians and what, and what we believe the Bible teaches not only concerning his nature, um, God's nature, but concerning our nature and how we have a need for for Christ. Um, Louis Burkhoff, and just in passing, it's a um, uh, a theologian who is well beloved. Um, uh, of course, this is not the Bible. This is not equal to the Bible, but we believe that 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 Louis Burkhoff has encapsulated. Uh, a, a great amount of truth uh, in this book and that points us to what the Bible is actually teaching so we just want to be faithful to the scriptures at the end of the day so anyways all that to say that that's the why of, the, of this channel um, why am I creating this channel for the purpose of, of um, getting into the things of God and and hopefully you guys can benefit from this um, the what like what is this channel well what is this channel? It's a YouTube channel, and um, it's a video, and it's in a video format, and so hopefully you guys can get truth out of this. Um, how am I going to do this? I kind of already explained that I'm going to be doing it in, in a systematic way where we're going to uh, be opening up uh, from the, the beginning pages and just reading reading a small ex excerpt and just digging into it, um, talking about it, and then you guys can follow along, you guys can comment. Um, all that stuff, ask questions, and um, uh, I'm not a scholar by any means, um, but I've been doing uh, a lot of studies for several years now. And um, anyways, um, all that to say that uh, this, again, this channel is dedicated to, um, to doing that kind of stuff, and I'm excited to do it um, because I think it's not only um, uh, valuable and insightful, 
Um, but at the same time, I, I believe that this is what God uses to fortify us as believers. And if you're not a believer, um, it's still fine. Um, you can watch, uh, comment, and, and find out why we believe these things, what is it that we believe in, um, do we have answers for you, or um, if you have questions, whatnot. That's what this channel is it's about. Um, uh, also, I'm going to say that I, I, have, I have titled this video or this um, uh, channel, um, Dying Man to Dying Men. And I think it was Paul Washer, if I remember correctly, that I heard him say that uh, in the context of him saying that he's going to preach always as a dying man to dying men. And that always stuck with me, even though I heard it years ago. And I think he got that from one of the Puritans. Um, but I, it always stuck with me because, like, I teach Bible studies now at the church that I go to, which is Sunlight Community Church. And I would have to say that I'm not that faithful in keeping that in my mind. I, I'm forgetful. So, but I would have to say a good maybe 50, 60 percent of, um, of the times that I'm actually teaching the Bible studies um, before I go in to teach, I, I try to, um, you know, have that mentality of saying that to myself. Hey, listen, I'm a dying man, for example. I'm dying. Tomorrow might be my last day. I might not be here anymore. This might be my last uh, teaching. And, and I'm going to be teaching it to people who are dying. And so I presume that the people who are listening to me are not saved, that they're not Christians. And I don't ever want to assume that anybody who's, who's, um, who's in the Bible study is saved. And so I'm going to not assume any, any of these things, and I'm going to preach as a dying man unto dying people. And so what it has done for me, it has, um, it has given me a new perspective. And I think this is what, you know, this is what defined the apostles in the New Testament, you know, um, it, this is what gave them the strength because they're saying, hey, listen, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Let's preach the gospel to as many people as possible because a lot of these people might not be here tomorrow. And so we're trying to save souls. Now, of course, this is from a Christian to an unbeliever perspective, assuming that they're not saved. But at the same time, it, it, I think it's applicable to some degree to Christian because it's like even though we're not dying in that technical term because we're, we're already saved and we believe that if we die tomorrow, we're going to go be with the Lord. But at the same time, again, not assuming that anybody is saved and just and not, just preach it to the people, teach the people, and um, not only not assume things, but also there's a sense in which these things actually um, encourage believers. So I guess my goal is twofold, right? And to encourage the believers and to um, plant the seed uh, for the unbeliever to be able to hear the gospel as well. So, hey, um, that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm probably, tonight, probably, I'm actually going to begin uh, the first lecture. Um, uh, I think it's on Revelation, as far as like, uh, actually that's the second portion. The first portion is on religion, and like the nature of religion, and why is there religion, and so on. It's a very good topic, and we'll do it, like I said, a short term. And um, that's the whole goal of, of, um, of this channel, is to, to be able to go through this. And then hopefully once we go through this, we can go into a different topic or something like that. But uh, I hope this, got, this blesses you guys, and I hope this is a, a, a platform for you guys not only to grow in Christ and to be encouraged. Because anyways, I want to say this. Um, we're living in a day and age where truth you know, is relative, isn't it? Uh, according to people, right? All, all truth is relative, which is an absolutely nonsense statement. It's an absolute nonsense statement. Um, but at the same time, that's what it's impacting our churches. We have lots of Christians who are believing that the truth is relative, that the Bible can be true for you, but not necessarily for me. And so that kind of mentality is seeping into our churches. And, and we, we, want to, we want to show people that, listen, like, God created us as rational creatures, as, as people who can think rationally because God is a rational person or being. And so when God created us, there's an assumption that when he speaks to us, he speaks to us coherently and clearly with the assumption that we, well, it's not an assumption for God, 
but with the fact that we um, are able to understand what he said. So, for example, if God says to Adam and Eve, thou shalt not eat of the tree, then he understands and he knows that we understand what he means by that. And he doesn't speak in contradictory terms. All that to say that, like, um, this is what's infecting our churches nowadays. It's this idea of, oh, we don't want to use reasoning and we don't want to use rationality and we just want to empty our minds and just just believe in Jesus and throw our, our our ourselves into the darkness kind of deal. And and we don't we don't agree with that. We don't believe that. We believe that we are rational creatures made in the image of God. And when God speaks to us intelligibly and and he desires for us to like the scripture says like to be to renew our minds. And so that's the goal in one sense of this is is to let's think about these things. You know, we have answers. And, and they're not illogical. And at the same time, there is room for faith because that's, that's, the, that's the tension that exists between Christians uh, and, and between um, Christians and or philosophers, if you will. It's like, well, what, what I, think, I think it was a, an old philosopher or, peer, or um, theologian who, who said, um, what does Jerusalem have to do with Athens? And the idea behind that, that statement is that like, Jerusalem, being like the church, or Christianity, has nothing to do with Athens, which is the capital of, uh, of philosophy, if you will, of reasoning and rationality. And so what this person was trying to convey is that we don't have anything to do with rationality. Like, we're, we're people of faith. And we look at that and it's like, wait a minute, you know what I'm saying? Like, we are a people of faith who, who believe in things and hope in things, but that does not mean that our faith is irrational. And that it has no, um, you know, coherency to it. Um, the faith that God uh, calls us to uh, to embrace, if you will, or not to embrace, but the faith that God calls us to exercise in the Son of God, Jesus, is a rational thing. And so we believe as Christians that that God is a rational being. We are rational beings, and we can communicate with God rationally. However, that does not mean that we can deduce everything rationally. There's a sense in which we have to also get a revelation from God and, and He has to reveal things to us. There are lots of things in the Bible that are mysterious to us that we just we just have to take in faith and we don't understand a lot of it. But just because we don't understand it does not mean that it is therefore illogical. Anyway, all that to say that that's a, a major uh, drive for me is to show Christians that listen, like we can take comf uh, comfort, we we can take we can be confident that our faith, it's it's we can take it to the bank, and and that's the goal. So um, I know I've said that's the goal a thousand times, <laughs> but uh, anyways, I'm gonna end this video for the sake of keeping it short. I've already gone 13 minutes, um, so but the goal again is to keep them short and crisp. And um, allow you guys to um, to just dive in, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, add people in, invite them. And I'm looking forward to it. God bless you all.